So welcome to The Wide Angle with Photo Cascadia. I'm Sean Bagshaw. And I'm Aaron Bobnick. Oh, Wait, and you, you, you said the I name first. The <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, there's one we can cut out. Okay, let's try it again. Uh, the, the opposite thing. Hey, I'm Sean Bagshaw. And I'm Aaron Bobnick. And, and this, this is The Wide Angle. The Wide Angle with Photo Cascadia. <laughs> Uh, want to try that one more time? Maybe you try, can... Do you want to try one more? Should we do the try to say it at the same time? Let's try it one more time and see what happens. Okay. Hey, I'm Sean Bagshaw. And I'm Aaron Bobnick. And, and this, this is the wide angle. Wide angle. <laughs> photo <laughs> Cascadia. <laughs> That's really hard. Well, is, there must be a little That's delay or something. Yeah, all right. Let's not do that then. <laughs> hey, I'm Sean Bagshaw. And I'm Aaron Bobnick. And this is the wide angle with Photo Cascadia. Awesome. I like that. So, hey, Aaron, how's it going? It's going really well, Sean. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing awesome, awesome today. I'm excited about what we're doing right now, which is yeah, me too. for us. For this photo. is new. Yeah, so this is episode one. You want to tell them a little bit about uh, what we're doing here, Sean? Well, you know, Photo Cascadia uh, for 10 years has written a weekly blog. In our last meeting, we talked about the idea that things have really changed on the internet. People used to read on the internet and now it's really moved to audio and video. So we thought, what if we did some audio articles and some video articles and this is the video article format. Yeah, so that was the idea at any rate. We know that a lot of our readers love to read our articles and we will continue to do those and try to put out the same level of quality content that we ever have, but we wanna keep things moving with the times. And so now we have a couple of new formats for putting out blog content and this is one of them, the video blog. It'll be conversations between two or more Photo Cascadia members about different topics. Might just be sharing news or it might be on some specific topic. In this first one, we're just going to share some news, some stuff that Photo Cascadia has been doing recently. And stay tuned because at the end, we have a little section on tips for photographing winter scenes. Yeah, stick around for that. Speaking of news, you have some big news. You've recently been made Canon Explorer of Light, which is super exciting. In fact, let me, I just, I got to share the screen for that. This is the Canon Explorer of Light page on the Canon website. There's your image right at the top. And then down here with all these great Canon Explorers of Light, there you are right there. Yeah, it's crazy, awesome. huh? <laughs> it's, so, um, it's surreal, really. It's quite an honor. And I'm, I'm really absolutely thrilled to be able to join that program. It's extra cool to see my image up there as the banner image as well. That was kind of a nice surprise. Tell me a little bit about the Canon Explorer Lite program. I mean, one of the highest regarded camera company professional photographer programs like that that's been and it's been around for a long time yeah wh what's it about yeah well you know the mission of the explorer of light program is really similar to what we're doing here with photo cascadia and so it's a natural fit for me the basic idea is to inspire and to educate and everyone who's in the program there are 33 photographers are all educators and have all proven themselves through their careers to be people who others feel inspired by. And so Canon reaches out to individuals who they feel fit that mode of operating. We're more than happy to teach workshops, to give talks, to write articles, to do all these educational things that help other photographers to grow as we grow too. It's very same stuff that we do with Photo Cascadia. Uh, this is a good fit then. That's awesome. And we're, we're all so excited for you. It's fun because the, you know, within the team, we've kind of been watching your progression and working with Canon over the past few years and, you know, doing workshops for them and presentations and articles and all kinds of different things. So when you uh, shared the news with the team that you had been made a Canon Explorer of Light. We were just so excited. It's a perfect fit, it's great. We're excited for you. We're excited to be able to ride along on your coattails. <laughs> um, well, we're right go, I'm taking you guys with me, you know that. Hey, all right. <laughs> well, that's awesome. We're, we're really excited to see what you do with that and where it takes you. So just yeah, well, exciting stuff coming, I think. Well, thanks, Sean. It really means a lot. And I'm, I'm really excited for all the same reasons. I'm very much looking forward to this new chapter in my career. Well, we're going through points of news. We should probably mention that we do have a book out now. 
new Photocast Cadia ebook. For those of you out there who haven't already heard the news, this is pretty exciting for us as a group. We just released it. And that yeah. is something that was a long time coming for us. We spent about two years working on it. And we are so thrilled to have that out now. Yeah, let me share it. I've got it here somewhere. Uh, yeah, this is it. Photographing through the seasons. It's got, what is it? It's like 200 pages. It uh, basically talks about photographing different seasons, all four seasons in the Western US. Each season has a section where we talk about general ideas for photographing in that season. And then we have stories. So we have images and stories about photographing that season in different locations all around the Western US. And we've included a whole bunch of nature tips. I think there are 49 of them, all aimed at helping people to be good stewards of the environments that they go to photograph. And I think that those, uh, as much as anything else, are, are what are generating a lot of comments from people, that they're really appreciating those tips, because not only do they encourage good behavior out in wild places, but they're actually really informative too. Some of those tips are new to people. There were things that they hadn't thought about before. And so they're finding it very helpful to know what to look out for when they go into certain environments. And that book was quite a process for us. We, we worked on it for, I don't know, a couple of years. When you've got seven photographers all trying to work together on a project like that, and we're all in different locations and different schedules, trying to coordinate stuff and get all the pieces to come together was, uh, yeah, that was quite a puzzle. But <laughs> it was a mammoth undertaking, but we did it. Um, Adrian found a really great book designer, somebody actually he just worked with in Portland. His first name's Jesse, I've never met him. Jesse, if Perfect you're job. watching, thank you. You did a really nice yeah. job with the design. And we really made sure that this book was quality all the way through. We didn't want it to fall short in any category. So when it came time to get it designed, this was not something we were going to do at home. <laughs> we, we found a professional and we're so glad that we did. And we're so, found, so glad that it was Jesse because he really brought some great ideas to it that we wouldn't have come up with on our own for sure, yeah. as any good designer will. Yeah. And you definitely pushed the quality. <laughs> I think uh, there would have been a time when, when uh, before you were around, we probably would have been like, oh, that's good enough. <laughs> Just get it out the door. <laughs> and you were like, no, it needs to look good. We need to have something that's quality. So that was awesome. But yeah, so the ebook, it's available on the website, just right on the homepage of the website, photocascadia.com. And there's a link to it right there if you want to check it out. You can check out some samples and even a, you did a, actually a little chat about it on a podcast with Rick Salmon. That's pretty informational, actually. It was funny because Rick found that when we were still in our pre-launch period, we hadn't really officially, hadn't officially announced it yet. Well, that's <laughs> and right. we just found that on my website, not on the Photocascadia website, and started asking me questions about it. He was very inquisitive and very intrigued by the book. So we discussed it quite a bit. And I think there's some good uh, information in that little audio clip for sure. Yeah. So let's see other news. Uh, you and I are going to be at Out of Acadia. Out of Acadia. Yeah. In October. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to that. I actually did that uh, the last time out of Chicago ran that event. In fact, that was the very first landscape event that Out of Chicago ever put together. And it was amazing that right out of the gate, they pretty much had it dialed. Right. They tweaked a few things, but actually they came back around to doing things the way that they did at that event because it just went so well. They, it got a little bit bigger later on and then they shrunk it back down to that size. And uh, so, yeah, it, it, it's a wonderful time of year to be in Acadia. So that's exciting. And it's also just really comfortable. Uh, it's one of those events where you don't have to go very far. You don't even have to walk far. And it's just beauty all around you. And there's so many interesting little areas to go to in the park. They're all short drives from the conference center. So yeah, it's just all kind of fun and easy. Really enjoyable photography. Here's the Out of Acadia website. And it's open for registration right now. It just opened uh, recently. And these things usually fill up quickly. So if you're interested, uh, you can just do outofchicago.com or just do a search for Out of Acadia and you'll find it. Great instructor lineup, Colleen Minnick, Albert Dross, who's amazing from, uh, I think he's from the Netherlands. Hey, there's us. And uh, Sarah Marino, Alex Noriega, Francesco Gola, and Belmont. I mean, just a great lineup of instructors lineup. all the yeah. way down. So that's pretty exciting. And... If you register before the end of February using either Bobnik or Bagshaw, you can get, I think, 250 bucks 250? off. 
250 bucks off. Also, I did an article on photography conferences and why it's a good idea to attend them. I had a whole list of them there that you might consider, including the Out of Chicago series. But I also discussed what benefits Lion Store for anyone who attends. They're, they're really great for photographers at any level, uh, if for no other reason than just to expand your horizons, make sure you're not stagnating, get some fresh exposure to new ideas. It's always a great idea just to put yourself in the, the midst of a bunch of really creative, awesome photographers because that can only lead to good things. Yeah, absolutely. I'm trying to find that article. Uh, here it is. There we go. Conferences. Yeah, that's a great article. All the things you just said about it. So check it out. Yeah, we just have most of a year to wait. <laughs> <laughs> Something that, that we also might want to tell everyone about is the other book that we have coming. This, this is something that we all really got excited about recently because we had our annual Photo Cascadia Summit that we do every year. We all get together. It's like the one time a year we can get the whole team together in person. And this meeting had a little extra something where we all met in Portland. You want to tell them what happened in Portland, Sean? Because it's sure. really exciting. Drum roll, please. Yeah, we, um, we've we been working now for about a year on a, a book project with Timber Press. And Timber Press Ooh. is a, a, a nature book publisher from Oregon, highly respected book publisher. And they, they approached us about doing a book on Oregon. So Photo Cascadia is providing all of the images for the book, it's going to be a, you know, coffee table format, you know, kind of art book all about the state of Oregon. And they had done their market research and realized that there hadn't been a lot of art books on Oregon in a long time. And so they were looking to do one and trying to find images or photographers and came across Photo Cascadia. So a couple of weeks ago, we were all kind of converging in Northern Oregon for our annual meetup. And it just worked out that we could go and meet the people at Timber Press and have a meeting with them. Uh, it was actually their idea, right? They, they always like to invite their, their authors in to get to know their production team and just so that everyone kind of synchronizes well and there's a good sense of goodwill going into the, the tail end of the project where things get difficult. Exactly. <laughs> Which I think is a great idea. So they invited us to come in and present for them. So we wanted to give them a real personal taste of what we're all about as a team and a little bit about each one of us individually. Yep. And they were immensely grateful. They loved it. Anyway, we've got a forward by someone who we're, we're pretty excited to have this person write the forward for the book. We're going to keep that a secret. We'll keep it a secret. I guess, I guess so. It's yeah. exciting we'll though. Someone secret. really famous. It's pretty cool. As that progresses, we'll be releasing news for things like pre-orders and uh, book talks and all that kind of stuff. But we're getting close. We are book getting closer. Mostly in, we're just down to the, the last part of it, last yep. push. Yeah. Speaking of our meetup, which that was the first part of the meetup, but then we headed out to the coast after that. And that was a lot of fun. We that's that's actually the highlight of the year for me in terms of anything going on with Photo Cascadia is we try to at least once a year, but it's usually just once a year, get all of us in the same place at the same time. And it's really difficult to do with all our different schedules. But for me, that weekend or three or four days or however long we have to, uh, to get together as a group and just talk about, you know, reminisce, tell stories, tell lies and tall tales, but also <laughs> plan for the next year and what we, uh, what we have coming up and that kind of stuff. It's just fun. And we spend so much time in different parts of the world, kind of communicating through emails or video chats and things like this that to actually be together uh, all together is really a great thing. Which I mean, which brings me back to the conference thing. You know, it's so related. It, it's really different when you're actually all together. The level of inspiration and camaraderie goes way up. It's not the same online. It's just not. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. In real life, it still counts for something. Real life is still the best. Yep. Part of what we want to do always in with Photo Cascadia with the blog and Photo Cascadia is share and teach and inspire most of the articles if you go back and look through the archives of 10 years of articles we are sharing our passion our knowledge for photography landscape photography this video chat format we hope 
continues that. But we thought since it's winter, we'd just talk about some winter photography tips. It is that time. And it's uh, especially on my mind because I'm about to head out to teach a couple of winter workshops in the Dolomites. But what do you usually look for, Sean, when you're out in a winter scene? What, what, what is your favorite scenario to work with there? I, I always love mountains. Um, but in the winter, I especially love mountains. I think that mountains with snow on them are just, you know, it changes. They, they just seem more, they seem bigger, more dramatic, more mountainy. Uh, yeah, the I agree. So I, <laughs> I usually uh, oftentimes head into mountain areas. And for the other piece for me is fresh snow. I mean, you can't control that and getting really good fresh snow is a rare commodity. But if I can time a winter trip to actually be out, in fact, and you and I have had this in the uh, Dolomites I mean, you probably had a lot of times, but the both times I was in the Dolomites with you, uh, it snowed a bunch right before we got there. And so when we arrived, we had fresh snow. And that, to me, just makes for wonderful winter yeah, photography. Pretty, pretty fantastic. I think another thing that I really enjoy about winter photography is that you don't necessarily need super dramatic light with all the snow around. It's reflecting, it's bouncing stuff. It's so interesting even subtle light is pretty dramatic with snow because it's just so much more reflective. I have one shot that I actually took when we were together shooting in the Dolomites. It's actually that one you, you were pointing out earlier at the top of the Canon Explorer of Light page. I can actually bring that up here. Yeah, pull it up. Share that. Let's see. This is that shot. I can love that it? shot. Oh, thanks. So that, that one grand opening. So this was that day that we were out before the group arrived and you know that that day we couldn't even see the mountains a lot of the time it was really socked in this is not a day when you're going to get really strong dramatic light yep. instead we got this really soft dramatic light exactly <laughs> you know? and atmosphere layers of atmosphere um yeah it's just beautiful with the, again the fresh snow the mountains just look so grand in that setting. What you can do with any situations where you have light that is soft and it's not super strong and directional is you can pretty much process that you know almost any way you want really. Mm -hmm. You can make the light as strong or as soft as you want. This one I was able to really bring out the subtle light that was there just through a little color toning, a little dodging and burning. It became a much more dramatic scene probably than what I was thinking it was at the time. Right, right. And it looks like, yeah, like color tone, like you're trying, like um, working with color balance. So a little warmer back where the light mm -hmm. is appearing to me, uh, yeah. warm it up to kind of draw you back there, make those stand out a little cooler in the foreground, in the shadow. Exactly. Area. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Really nice. You had an image you wanted to talk about, didn't you? Yeah, I go, well, I'll show it's a little different, but as one actually I just took recently on um, a little winter trip with David Cobb, we were out photographing in Washington. We, we uh, left actually the Photo Cascadia meetup. It was kind of in the middle of this cold snap and it was really rainy on the coast, but we headed into Washington to find the snow. We did find some snow in the Palouse, which was exciting. I'd, I'd never been in the Palouse region in the snow before, so that was fun. But then we went further north, almost to the Canadian border up in the uh, Kettle Mountains, and it was so cold. It was single digits. The highs were like nine or 10 degrees and lows at night. I went into the negatives, but it created this situation, this extremely, this wasn't snow. This is just frost, you know, yeah. it was so cold. And then some fog blew through in this forest and frosted the trees. And so it's this kind of imagery that you can get in the winter. If you're willing to go out into kind of really cold temperatures or in the snow that you wouldn't find, you just can't find that anywhere else or any other time of year. And I love that about winter photography too. Yeah, I envy you that shot. I was just out recently with some friends and I, I was in search of frozen fog and I didn't get it. And this is probably the 20th time that I've had that problem. It's my white whale. <laughs> Yeah, it's one of those things. It is hard to know because it can be so localized. It can be cold enough, but only where some fog happened to be while it was cold enough is where you're going to exactly. get conditions like this. And we just happened on this. We were just driving around in the mountains in the snow. You know, weren't finding really what we were looking for. And we came around a corner and David saw this little section of forest and we had to stop and get out and freeze. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it was a lot of fun. Winter so, photography doesn't have to be mountains and snow, though. I wish probably mention that as well. I've got another shot that along those lines that that I could share here. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, so, so this too is a winter photo. But that's not ice. That's not ice, although it kind of looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah, that's <laughs> salt. That's just salt. That's from Death Valley. And I think there's a really good lesson in this one. This was mid-December and we had bluebird skies and no really uh, dramatic conditions anywhere at all. So I just went looking for whatever I could find and found these little tubes of salt, which were actually not that little. They were really tall. And it was a process of trying to figure out what I could do with them. And it wasn't until I gave up on my initial idea, which was to use kind of a longer lens and shoot down on them and try to make an all over pattern that I decided to go with the 11 to 24 and get right down in there at 11 millimeters. And I just squealed like a little kid when I saw all those salt tubes kind of splay out like, like a mandala. And I was like, now that's cool. <laughs> And I got so excited, but it took me a long time to hit upon that solution. Right. And it's an idea that you know, wouldn't have occurred to me had I not been kind of stymied in all of my other ideas. You know, the conditions weren't lining up for any of the stuff that I would normally do. So it forced me to kind of work a little bit harder. And it was only because of the winter conditions that I was able to get that. Yeah, lots of opportunities in the winter to photograph all kinds of neat things. And that's, that's a great example. Yeah, really original, different. I've never seen a photo you know, anything like that. Yeah. So I think maybe the takeaway is that when the weather's bad and it's winter and it's cold and a lot of times people don't think about going out and photographing or it doesn't sound that appealing, if you can manage the weather, if you're in a cold climate and get out there, you can find landscape photography conditions that are different than you're going to find any other time of year, which will enable you to make photographs that are different, that are unique. It's a lot, it's just a lot of fun. And then you get to come back and go inside and put on clothes and sit by the fire and you know have a whiskey or something. Absolutely. That's one of the best parts, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe that's where the inspiration comes from. <laughs> uh, Those of you who are finding us through the blog, please feel free to leave us a comment on the blog about what you'd like to see in the future with this new format, because we can take it in a lot of different directions and we're really excited about it. If you've found us on YouTube, uh, do be aware that we have the blog <laughs> and there's a lot of content there going back 10 years for you to discover. So the Photo Cascadia YouTube channel, which is a new thing, will be where we house these videos. But other things that are on the blog, come on over to the website, like Aaron said, and you can search 10 years of, of archives of all kinds of great photography, landscape photography content and education, all kinds of stuff. And it's all free. It's just something we do because we like to share our enthusiasm and our passion. Over the years, seven of us have picked up little bits of things that might be useful to people. So we try That's to right. put that on there. I love that we can do this too. This is so fun. So I'm in my the world headquarters of outdoor exposure photography, which is Ashland, Oregon in my basement. But I'm talking with you like we're in the same room, but you're in... I'm in Slovenia. Yeah, that one is, of my two offices. Uh, yeah. So I won't always be in this one. My my headquarters is in California, but I do have this little office as well. I love that. And the fact that we can have this conversation across the world like that is just incredible. It's amazing. So Super cool. Well, it was nice talking to you, Sean. And until next time, we are Photocascadia. Yeah. Photocascadia.com. Come on over anytime. We'll leave the light on for you. <laughs> yes, just like Tom Bodette. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye.